Yeah, we're gonna watch some old old FPS Russia content because this is this is cozy for me. This is a nice cozy bit of content. Ooh, I forgot how loud that fucking intro was. Anybody else forget how loud that was? AA-12. It's a fully automatic 12-gauge shotgun. It's a military weapon. You're getting 300 rounds per minute. And the thing about this gun, it is complete stainless steel construction. And uh, you don't need to clean it. You Get FPS Russia it. on the podcast. It keeps going no matter what. Yeah. In any weather condition, whether you're a Marine, whether you're a SEAL coming out of the ocean, everything joins. This is the magazine. Guys, this was a 20, simpler uh, time. A better time. Drum mag. Also comes with eight round box magazines. And... Uh, Got some cool targets for you today. So. Thank you, Bob, for the bits, man. Let's see what we can do. Paintball kitty one followed. I wonder really if that's cool. the real one. Fully automatic. No select fire. This is your select fire. <laughs> this is so funny. Awesome. Then all you do... Your yeah, this is when life was good. When everybody was just Throwing vibing off each other. And one of the cool things, you can, you've got many different kinds of ammunition. So, for uh, anti-personnel you have around, for long range you have around, even for anti-vehicles. So, it works out very nice. Let's uh, see if we can step it up a notch. Yeah, I believe this is okay, it. Okay, so one of the really cool things about the oh, AA-12 yeah. is door breach. Normally, the you've got video. one guy with a shotgun, he breaches the door. Followed by a team with M4 carbines. Wraith Gang, thanks for the two bucks. Whatever. With this. Why didn't you stream yourself shooting at these, those cops yesterday? Would have been great content, you know? I think there's, uh, I think the risk a little higher than the reward there. You are the entire. I think that goes against Twitch terms of service. <laughs> you can blow the door out, then go in and uh, deal with the threat. Now, I've got the breaching choke on here. You can see it's got teeth, so uh, it jams in. It's not going to slip off. And Worst case scenario, you can always poke someone with it and fuck their shit up, but uh, the thing is, you never know how many dead bolts you're on for. This one's been blown up. This is where it normally is. There could be one here, here, here. The A12, it doesn't matter. The entire inside of the door is gone. It doesn't matter what's there. There's Paintball kitty. Left. Okay, so I got another drum. I want to show you one more thing. I'm pretty sure just that's real paintball case, kitty I'm modding or just... Got some midgets who are going so hopefully I wasn't bamboozled. Paint. You can just saw, saw the door in half. Cut it right down. Thanks, Ares the Hobbit. Appreciate it, buddy. There's no more door. You kick the bottom in. And uh, everyone goes in. Okay. <laughs> one it's funny going back watching these and like remembering the way you remember it and then now like now that i've been very good friends with kyle for the better part of 10 years like back then he and i knew each other not very tight but seeing like his little little, little kyle faces when he's like and this and you kick right through and it go right there oh well it's full back on me but it did everybody rush in it's like you see him fixing his little things he never really scripted himself that much so Funny little things. Funny little things. You never up watched the videos once they were uploaded, Kitty? Well, I haven't watched any of these since probably within five, six months of their original upload. But, yeah, these videos hold up. They're sick. That's why his channel still gets, you know, insane viewership. Now you're going to get to see two AA-12s. That's a handsome boy. No more deadly weapon system in the world than a Russian with two AA-12s. And keep in mind, don't try this at home. I am a professional Russian. So uh, let's get a couple more shots and uh, have a little more fun. Okay, so obviously this is a military <laughs> shotgun, but uh, if you want to take it bird hunting, pull. You can do that. Looks like a really uncomfortable gun to do that with. Okay, Looks so heavy. with any weapon system, you're not always going to be firing in your backyard. You're going to be a SEAL team coming out of the ocean. You're going to be uh, going through a jungle. You could drop it in a river. With the AA-12, it doesn't matter. A 
I've got this completely submerged in water. It's been in there for about 10 minutes. And we're going to pull it out and see how I don't know. That water's pretty clean. The 2011 style slow mo is great. <laughs> mag throw another one in it's good to go so you see how reliable this weapon system is you can do anything to it it doesn't matter it works every time how many views is that video set at kitty asks 65.1 million because i just went to most popular and this is his biggest video 65 million that's a lot Okay, so one really cool thing about the AA-12 is that it has absolutely no recoil. You've got very, very little. There is a complete spring system back here that absorbs all of the shock, so uh, anyone can operate this weapon. A child could operate. Oh no, he's younger in this video than I am now. Oh, he's way younger in this video when I, than I am now. I'm a fucking loser. Oh no. Uh-oh. Because this is like nine years ago, which means Kyle's 26, what is he, 30, no, he's 34 now, so, you know, 25-ish, and I'm 29, so damn, I'm four years ahead of him here, and I have, I don't have any 65 million view videos. Oof, oof, a little self-cringe. Tucker was 14, was he? That'd be hilarious. Okay. Hope you enjoyed the video, my friends. Uh, this one was pretty expensive to make, but uh, I think it was worth it. And uh, as always, have a nice day. He was getting the most out of that slow mo footage. Who's ready for the really loud outro song? Oh, it's not even there yet. Second biggest video from the... Hello, my friend. The Kyle Man. Is this is a Kyle Memorial stream. Yes, unfortunately, both Kyle and Joe Rogan were hunting boars from a Black Hawk helicopter and they perished. So, RIP, Kyle and Joe Rogan, we, we know you guys are doing a podcast in heaven now. And also Boogie died. And also Wings. And it is FPS Russia again, and I've got something very, very special for you guys today. This, my friends, is a prototype quad rotor. Now, it may look like something you've seen before, but believe me, the technology in this baby isn't going to be out there for at least another decade. It doesn't even have a technical name yet, so... Well, was he wrong or right? What was the... 2012, okay. Coney, the year of Coney 2012. For now, we're just going to call it Charlene. So fucking loud. <laughs> Now, let me show you a few of the features here so you'll understand why I say this is truly a weapon of the future. Dr. Beatus, thank you. In the you. next 10, maybe 15 years, shit is going to get very real. We're talking about some pretty sophisticated warfare, and the soldiers are going to need technology like this to get above the combat, around their enemies, and get into tight Yeah, Zap, I got kind of sunburned a few days this ago. This is why Charlene is unlike anything I've ever seen, and I've seen some crazy shit. Now, most of the quad rotors that you've seen on YouTube are doing some pretty sophisticated maneuvers, and none of those toys is equipped with a submachine gun and a 100-round magazine. Also, Charlene is capable of flying up to 30 miles per hour, 
at altitudes of a quarter mile high. Oh, and it only takes one professional Russian and this fancy tablet to kill you. This thing in itself is pretty impressive. It's got a lot of cool features. The most impressive thing is you see everything that the quad rotor sees. So the biggest benefit is getting that bird's eye view of what's in front of you. Pretty cool. And once you know what's in front of you, maybe you don't want that in front of you anymore. I'm going to send Charlene over the hill, see what we can see. Yeah, I remember. I remember this, the, the post video reality of this one. Looks like we've got some lost and confused visitors over there. Let's take a closer look. No, I don't think I recognize any of those guys. Let's take them. Yeah, yeah, that's something Kyle told me at the time, Kitty, for those who didn't see, that this control panel is just cardboard in an iPad case. And I remember hearing about that at the time and being like, damn, I'm an inside man now. I know that this shit's getting faked. As if, like, a lot of other people didn't, didn't know. But that was, that was funny. That was funny. Good times. Good times. I'm out. Thank you for the bits, man. That was awesome. Look at the guy's head rolling down the hill. So sorry if I missed anybody's else. sub, but thank you to everybody who's subbed. So we've seen what Charlene. June, we're going bigger than ever. We're gonna make May. We're gonna make May look like a bitch month compared to June. Taking over Twitch. Let's try putting her in a situation she's well suited for, sneaking up on some evil beaches and hard to reach places. Looks like our friends here decided to have a little dinner party, <laughs> and they didn't even invite them. For, with 2020 eyes, this video is so clear. It's just absurd. One of them brought a the whole bucket of gasoline. We'll just have to show these guys a little hospitality, Charlene style. And why would the video look like that? Why would the video be ooh, grainy, ooh, swordfish, hacker shit? It's funny. Dude, <laughs> dude <laughs> someone was saying everybody thought this was real in 2012. Yeah, the comments made in 2012 about this, it was like, if anybody was like, dude, this, uh, something's a little iffy here, X, Y, Z, why does the camera look like that? And that gun attached to the bottom, it looks kind of weird, something's off about it. People would be like, you think someone would just go online and lie in the year of our Lord 2012? By the way, Coney is the biggest deal of all time, and I'm donating. I'm gonna wear a Coney 2012 shirt. And we're gonna look back on this time and go, thank God we were so ahead of our time when pointing out, when, when seeing frauds and falsehoods. <laughs> Zombie terrorists know how to have a good time. Oh, all the fire is real, yeah. Because basically people would be like, oh, I don't know if this thing right here is necessarily the thing firing rounds and blowing stuff up. People would be like, oh, so he just put explosives on things and blew them up. Right, right. As if our military, that this Russian expat has access to, doesn't have exploding, <laughs> exploding fucking drones. Well, my friend, it's been a pretty epic day, but I'm not sure we've blown up enough shit quite yet, so lucky for us, this baby is equipped with a self-destruct payload with a 15-foot blast radius. So yes, my friend, as much as it pains me, <laughs> I'm going to blow this thing up. I don't even think that it's... Think, my friend, Yuri, is the drone even there right now? Thanks, buddy. <laughs> the 
Dude, the accent's fake too. <laughs> Enjoyed yourselves as much as I did. Looks like the future's going to be fun. Dude, people back in the day, any sort of inkling in Kyle's comments that was like, hey, you know, this guy's from Georgia and he's not even Russian. Like, people would get mad on a level of like running up to a nine year old and be, or five year old and be like, Santa's not real. See you later, bitch. Idiot. Like, and running away. Like, people would act like, oh, what? Why would you come in here and tell lies? But he is Russian. What, he's faking a Russian accent? No, he's KGB. Like, people, maybe some of you were around eight years ago watching this shit when he was first uploading it eight, nine years ago. People w defended to the death that he was a real Russian agent. To the death in his comment section. You would get buried with criticisms. But if you can't wait another 15 years, my friends are telling me that this baby might just be in the next call of Rifly, duty. Rifly 777, thank you, my shit. big dick friend, for the so sub. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, have a nice day. <laughs> Those old intros and outros are so funny. Oh, this was a good one the 40 millimeter machine gun. All these top ones, these are bangers. Fucking banger videos. May 2011, May 23rd, 2011, over nine years ago. <laughs> over nine years ago. Yeah, this is memed really hard. How old was Kyle? This is nine years ago and he was, he's 34 now. So 25, right? Ish. My friends, it's Zephy of Russia, and I've got something very nice for you today. This is a 40 millimeter Bofa. It's an Austrian-made World War II era gun, and uh, it's actually the most powerful machine gun in the world that a civilian can own, operational in the way. And uh, <laughs> one of the cool things, every time you take a look at this, you get an appreciation of just how powerful the gun is. It fires a four-pound projectile at 2,800 feet per second. So a little bit more powerful than what we're used to going back like it is so funny nine years ago when i was watching this i was like oh yeah this is my this is my older friend kyle he's in his mid 20s while I, I at the time was like like god i this is depressing i look so much older now than he looks here and i'm only four uh, no actually four years that's quite a bit of time from 29 to 25 to 29 so good for fucking him good for him he's yeah, you look terrible. Fuck off, bitch. Using. What I really like about this gun is you can either operate it manually or you've got the toggle switch here. So check this out. STDX boss, thank you for the 500 bits. I always knew FPS Russia wasn't Russian, but it took me 100 episodes of PKA to catch that he was Kyle. Christ, dude, that is some... That is some... A bone-chilling level of retardation. It took you that long. And I would know. That's so loud. Brody, thank you for the sub, my friend. When are you going to join the St. Louis protests? I don't know. I was thinking about, uh, thinking about popping down there. Maybe grabbing a Froyo, walking around. Got some targets set up down there, and uh, I think we're going to hit it. So let's see what we can do. <laughs> These videos are so loud. Okay, so now we're going to see what this gun can really do. Going fully automatic. Fire the hole. <laughs> 
so this is the clip we've talked about 15 times, or Kyle has, where he you know elucidates what actually went on. So this gun was supposed to go like bang, 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 straight down into that far bank. And the fact that it went bang, 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 it was shooting like six or seven, maybe even eight or nine miles into that other direction. <laughs> all because just this boom, 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 boom. All of those are going miles <laughs> past where they're supposed to. See, he even said he, they had to like sync it up with four other shots so it didn't seem like it was just, you know, heading into into one of the Carolinas. Okay, so now we've got a 40 millimeter bumper aimed at our mannequin who's wearing some FPSO gear, by the way. And uh, here's the meme. I don't think this could end well for anyone. So uh, fire in the hole. <laughs> God, these videos were so sick. Not bad. Okay, so not uh, bad. I hope you enjoyed the video, my friends. As always, please favorite the video, it helps a lot, and uh, if you're interested in this gun, there's a, uh, some information in the description, but uh, as always, have a nice day. Yeah, I heard that too. Who the hell was clapping? Eventually, we're going to get so meta, I'm going to be watching my own PKA clips. Oh, Dragon's Breath. Every time I see the next one on this list... It's great. It's like just a whole wave of memories. <laughs> Watch the old COD commentaries. Yeah, that would be funny. Hello, my friends. This is MPS Russia again, and I've got a nice video for you today. And I have a few volunteers for this one. I've got Jerry. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna watch junkyard quickies. And, uh, they're going to help us show off some specialty 12 gauge shotgun rounds. I've got my Remington 887 here. Got a nice little paint job on that. And uh, so we've got some flechette rounds, which are tiny darts. We've got uh, dragon's breath rounds, which are actually shoot fire at the target. And we've even got some uh, bolo rounds. So it's uh, two large balls with a steel cable in between. And I think these Cantrell, thank you for the sub, my big dick friend. Much appreciate. Five months of continued sub. Okay, so the Appreciate it. Thank you to all of my subscribers. Round. It's about uh, 12 or 15 tiny steel darts in each shell, and uh, I think our friend's going to have a bad day. Okay, you can see the darts stuck in in here. Yeah, there's one of the darts. And uh, they went through it here, here. Tubby, 23, Everywhere. thank you very much. Stuck in oh, and we got Big Dig Matt Woodworth, gifting five subs. Thank you so much. Much obliged. Thank you, Matt. I knew you'd come back and retake your throne soon enough. But uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it, guys. There's cheek there. So uh, let's try something else. Okay, so this time it is a fucking ball, they call this pit bull, so it's a one-out slug with six double-off buckshot behind it, and uh, I think it's going to work out pretty nice. Right. So you can see it does absolutely T for Real TV, damage. thank you very much. You've got the, uh, the one-out slug shooting it here, here, and here. And then you've got all of the buckshot hitting it there and there and there, putting the, uh, the smaller holes in. Okay, let's step it up a notch, go to something else. Okay, so this time we've got a bolo round. It is uh, two very large uh, buckshots with a steel cable in between. And uh, Thank you, Murph. We got a sub storm happening right now. Thank you, guys. Okay, so you can see right here where one of the bolo rounds hit, the two shot penetrated, and the wire broke away. 
think maybe it's because this is hard fiberglass, but with a person, you would just drag in and the wire would make a big channel. Oh, the day after tomorrow video? Let's try something else. Oh, I forgot I made that. Okay, so <laughs> this one is called Rhodesian Jungle. You've got uh, bird shot with bug shot behind it. If you're in a, like a vegetative area, like a jungle or something, you've got the, uh, the bird shot going through vines and around them, and then you've got the bug shot coming behind it. And uh, I think it's going to make a lot of little holes. Adrio, thank you for the sub, man. Really appreciate it. Divinus, okay, TTV, so thank you for the sub. Let's measure your head. No, that's a number tiny holes for my own, on you know, my own interest. Space, I don't want to be mocked. Body and, uh, I think down there too. And then you've got the buckshot here and here and pretty much everywhere at this point. So uh, it's a much bigger pattern and uh, it would definitely work out pretty nicely. That's got to hurt. But uh, let's try something I cooked up myself. Okay, so this is yes, something Yes, these I are the cool ones. Myself. I've got an arrow inside the shotgun, and uh, I don't know how this is going to work, but it's going to go very bad for him. Oh, wait, no, this isn't the Dragon Breath. That's after this one. Head girth measuring how many subs? 2,000 subs, I will get a tape ruler, and I will measure my okay, fucking head. So how eye, about that? Osama Bin Laden style, and come around here. The back of the arrow broke off and stayed inside of his head, and the rest of it kept going, so, uh, I'd say that's pretty damn effective. Okay, one more thing. Let's go to that one. Okay, so this is the dragon. There, here's mountain. the cool We're ones. We're going to shoot our other friend over here. We then dressed him up like a civilian, that way we know, uh, how flammable he is. And, uh, as always, don't try this at home unless you are a professional. Fractal, thank you for the sub, my friend. I remember all I wanted to do was play with a shotgun with fire rounds after watching this video. I know, this video is sick. As you can see... Those are very effective. I hope you enjoyed the video, my friends. And as always, have a nice day. Yes, I can wear hats. Bigot. What was that thing? Oh, I had to... I won't bother. Or, actually, fuck it. What was it? What was the hurricane, the, the day after tomorrow hurricane? Was that it? So basically like eight years ago when, seven years ago. Okay. <laughs> People got mad about this video. I just remember goofing around. I was drunk on some weekend in college and like the Hurricane Sandy stuff was going and I was like, Oh man, I'm gonna make this is before fake news was a thing. I was like, I'm gonna edit in clips of the day after tomorrow very lazily and then put uh <laughs> put real Yeah, the ratio wasn't very good. And like people did not think it was funny. People did not think it was funny. And you can you can see the point where I got to like forty five seconds into the video where I just like reuse a clip because I just remember sitting at my computer being like, like two in the morning, just drunk, like I don't fucking care, just just show that one again. <laughs> Earlier this morning, we heard from Chip Reed in Ocean City, Maryland. Since we've talked with him, conditions there have started to get very rough. Chip is with us again, but he's on the telephone. Chip, uh, you have seen a few of these. Tell me, when you're looking at this now, at this moment, how is it different from what you've seen before? Well, I'll tell you, Charlie, I was here last year for Hurricane <laughs> Reed, and that was a walk in the park compared to this. Uh, shortly after I did that live shot with you uh, in the last half hour, uh, we were starting to get a little nervous, <laughs> thinking maybe we should move to our higher ground, so my camera crew went looking for a, another location, and that's when this happened. Take a listen. Okay. Whoa! Whoa! Hey, guys! Whoa! Oh, my God. Wow. 
And th- th- so uh, a rogue wave, uh, you know, that burns about six or eight feet, and it was only the waves were only touching the burn on the other side, and that wave just came roaring over. Chip, my heart was racing as I saw, of course, that water come right up to you. I could hear you say, whoa. How quickly were you able to get out of, of harm's way? Everybody okay there? Well, just, you know, my first instinct was to grab the camera tripod and keep the camera. The Seeing camera so drunk and using clips over again. Down into the foot or two of water that uh, accumulated where we had been standing. Uh, so we are going to be able to get back online, uh, but a lot of uh, other. E- oh. A lot of people didn't like that one. A lot of people didn't that. I mean, for my channel in 2012, 130,000 views was a lot. Yeah, of course I made that. It made me laugh. (laughs) All right. You know, I think people didn't like it because I was doing it, like, as the the hurricane was happening. (laughs) Anyway, I got to say some thank you to people. Ritev, thank you so much for all the gifted subs. Really appreciate it, buddy. That's five coming from you. Uh, Adrio V, thank you for the sub. Oh, I didn't miss too much. Perfect. That was all Ritev's gift. Thank you, Ritev. Really appreciate it. Big dick move. Yeah, that was... (laughs) Oh, man. I, I don't think I've ever laughed to myself by myself more than I did when I was making that video. Today we got the Chris Vector. Going to have some fun. Let's start the show. <laughs> Hello, my friends. It's FPS Russia again. October 2020. I've got video here that you guys have been requesting for a while. So this is the Chris Vector. It's a 45 ACP submachine gun, and it screams. So you can see right here. This thing is extremely compact. You throw the uh, folding stock on there, fold it up. It's going to fit into just about any carry case, any Pelican case. It's about iPhone 6 plus size, something like that. A few other little features and uh, looking around the gun. One thing I like a lot, the barrel is pretty much perfectly in line with the trigger. That's keeping the recoil impulse coming straight back where you like it, nice and low. Also, because it's a Chris Vector, it's got that recoil mitigation system. So the bolt's not reciprocating back and forth like this. It's coming down, recoil's being absorbed, and coming back up. That's what makes a Vector a Vector. And that's part of why the rate of fire is over 1,200 rounds per minute. You're going to see when we put this thing in two round burst, each of those rounds are pretty much side by side without very much effort on my end. There's a couple different ways you can pick these up. Obviously, this one has the folding stock. You can also get a version like this, like I like, with the M4 stock. This one just fits me better. I like it a lot more. Obviously got their uh, suppressor on here. We're going to have a lot of fun today, so... I still remember, even at the time, this this Vector video being the one where like I was like, all right, if I got one of these guns, I want it to be this one. This just looks sick. Maybe it's not that great. You know, maybe it's not the coolest gun, but I don't know. There's something about this one. It just looks futuristic, sick. Sick gun. Thank you, Obero. Does anybody have one? Anybody have a vector out there? They're honestly amazing. Oh, I don't care if it's in full auto or not. It looks sick. Of course not. Oh, are you not a... Oh, desynchronization. Thank you very much. I recognize your name from donating some subs in the past. Much, much obliged. Thank you. Let's get to it. Okay, so we got our ballistics gel down there, and I've got some 45 ACP rip ammo in here. This is really impressive stuff. You guys have seen me shoot the 9mm and the 380. The 45 ACP is brand new. And Thank I you, Donati. And the double taps coming from the Chris are going to be really devastating downrange, so let's check it out. So let's go down the range. I'm pretty sure that was going to tear that target all to pieces. All right, so let's take a look. I'm pretty sure this guy didn't make it. So as you turn it sideways, we can see a lot of those impacts coming through here. But the really telling thing is on the back. I'm going to be careful not to make this fall. 
So these are the cores of the bullet. Obviously, all those looking beautiful flower petals peeled off. And oh, they'll fuck you up. Channels, but you've also got the base of each round. You see those back here. And those carried all the way through the ballistics gel, all the way through the back. So these are some really impressive rounds. And as you look through here, it's just full of tiny pieces of copper. And each of one, each one of those are like a razor blade making their own wound channel, doing tons of damage. Really, really dangerous round. Very effective. And it ran well out of the machine gun, too. So I'm impressed. Let's try something else. Okay, so we got our paint stacked up down there. We're actually running some plus P ammo here. It's more powerful ammunition. And I want you to pay attention. I want you to listen closely as we go through the video. And you can actually hear the difference in the rate of fire between the plus P ammunition and some of the regular ball ammunition versus incendiary that uh, will break out a little earlier. But let's get messy. So now Turn up the volume. This, this is funny. Usually, or uh, Kyle just texted me, and I was like, I saw the little notification from it, and I was like, oh, he, you know, is he gonna be mad at me for watching this stuff on stream? And no, it was something totally unrelated, but it was funny that like out of nowhere, it just bleh, bleh. Kyle is texting. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I've made a nice big mess for someone else to clean up. I got something else I want to show you, and. This is going to be pretty impressive, and I've actually got some cool gear to uh, destroy, so let's go over there. So one of my favorite YouTube channels is <laughs> DM Pranks. It. They uh, dress up in a scary freaking clown costume and prank people on the street, smashing fake skulls and stuff like that. Well, they were kind enough to send me their clown costume, and we're going to barbecue it along with our pig pimp over there, so let's warm things really up. Really cool shit. So our pig pimp didn't go off the first time, but we rigged him back up. Don't think he's getting away this time. I absolutely love that. See, the thing that's so unique about this when you're shooting it is the, uh, the two round burst. That's really that cool. That was two rounds going down cool range. Clip. They both hit him so close together you could barely even tell and the kinetic energy of not just one round hitting and throwing it off balance, but the next one hitting it right after, just bowls him right over. I got one more thing for you. Okay, so we had a nice time today with the Vector. Like I said, rate of fire is crazy, very controllable, and I really like the ergonomics. Plus, just look at the thing, it's pretty damn sexy. I think it's time to finish off the day with a nice drink. Got the whole keg of Natty Light down range, and Natty about to light. make it pay. Oh, wasting okay, all that. Okay, so it turned out the 45 ACP beer. wasn't quite up to the job of piercing through that stainless steel keg. We did pierce it. Yeah, if you're one of the, I would assume, zero people here who aren't familiar with PKA, uh, yeah, this is this is the keg that he tried to return, and they did not want to take it back. We did get all the beer out, luckily, but we were getting a lot of ricochets. That didn't seem safe, so we backed up a little bit filled the gun up with tracer ammunition, and I'm hoping that as we shoot the keg, maybe we'll get to see some of those uh, ricochets, so you'll get an idea of what I was seeing. That's like so much fun. So I don't know if the camera was able to catch all of that, but I definitely saw a couple of rounds skimming off the left, skimming off the right. Keep in mind, because not everyone knows what bullets do when they hit things, they're like rubber balls, they'll bounce. So, had a lot of fun today, as I've said. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, have a nice day. Lemur, thank you for the five bucks. Oh, oh, Lemur, five dollars and it didn't show up on screen? Is it because of a word you used that's banned Twitch-wide in the donation? Do you think that's it? You think that might be why it didn't show up? <laughs>
You goose. You absolute goose lemur. All right, here's another cozy one. Another another cozy video. May 2011. Hey, so a lot of you know I have a Great Dane puppy. He's nine or 10 months old and uh, he's a blast, but what you might not know is that he's loud. He barks a lot. And because of that, we can't let him stay outside as much as we'd like to let him stay outside. It's beautiful out right now, it's springtime. So, uh, so in comes this guy. Yeah, this video was, was so fucking funny. That's why, that's why it went viral. Deluxe Big Dog Bark Control. There's even a picture of a Great Dane right on it. What could be more perfect for my new puppy than, uh, than this guy? And check this out. It delivers a safe but annoying static correction. Sounds perfect, doesn't it? Let's give this safe but annoying static <laughs> correction a try. All right, <laughs> so um, I'm a little bit nervous. It doesn't seem to, to oh, activate by talking, yeah. even talking loud like I am now, but it, woof. Thank you, Lemur. <laughs> woof. Good, good vibes. Good vibes in all the old vids. It's powerful here in the gun on earth. Watch. Oh, <laughs> all right, all right. We'll do. People are asking for that. Ten years ago. Hey guys, this is Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, bringing you a, a video I'm really looking forward to, to showing to everybody. So here's the deal. We got into this uh, lobby last night, and a free for all- Oh, hooray! <laughs> ...came up and it got voted down. So the next free for all that came up, all my friends were like, Oh, you guys don't know, you don't know, you can't vote this down, you have to play free for all. Woody and Onslaught are gonna go. It was on. It was on like Donkey Kong. And um, uh, I forget if during the lobby whether I um, sat there silently just waiting to see what would happen or if um, uh, I talked trash to cover my, my insecurities. But uh, I knew it was on. I knew that you know I had done a, a video making fun of Onslaught and called him my daddy and told him all about yeah, that. Yeah, these were the good old mother. days, man. And... Um, uh, also, I had done a response video, and everyone was like, we might just get out of the way and let Woody and Onslaught go edit. So um, so here's what happened. Here's what happened when we actually prayed free-for-all. And I'm going to show this to you guys, but uh, while this plays out, I want you to enjoy a little tune I put together, a little something that, uh, that I hope that you like uh, listening to as much as I like making. It's awesomely bad.
I promised you awesomely bad, and I delivered. Now look, I look out here in the meadow, and I see, what do I see? A baby buffalo strolling along, grazing on the on the grass, and uh, getting his little fill. But uh, baby buffalo's in a lobby with lions here, and, uh, and I'm a hungry lion. Who else remembers the I'm baby buffalo stuff? So, um, so there it is. I was really happy with the way this thing worked out. I finally took the lead in this thing, and I've got a, a harrier up there doing work for me. And that was a fluke. Pay no attention to what just happened there. Uh, I, I think a shotgun shell to the toe is lethal. I, I don't know why it didn't happen. But uh, on top, I was so happy to win this game. See, I was, I was, I was purposefully losing to try and help the video because obviously I knew that was a gameplay that he would. No, of course not. Seventeen and twenty-three. <laughs> I never told you I was good. Fucking noob. Fucking noob, dude, indeed. Hello, my friends. It's FPS Russia again, and I have a pretty nice video for you today. It's one a lot of you have been requesting. Get Jesus, thank you very much. Powerful handgun in the world, the 500 uh, Smith & Wesson Magnum. I've got it right here. And uh, we're going to be comparing this pistol to the 44 Magnum which at one time was also the most powerful handgun in the world. And you can see the difference. It's a very big difference. You have a much, much bigger handgun here. The, uh, the one interesting thing about it is this one is a five shooter, so only five bullets, and that is because it is such a large round. And uh, the 44 is a six shooter. If you look right here, you can see the difference in the ammunition. You've got the standard 240 grain hollow points, and with hollow points, many of you ask, it's simple, it's just the end of the bullet is hollow, and uh, you've got the flat nose uh, 500 caliber, and this is a 400 grain bullet, so almost double, and uh, a lot more powder behind this one. So let's shoot our clown with the 44. What year was this one? This was 2011, March, early 2011. Let's see what we can do, and then we'll uh, get this one out. A lot of anti-clown stuff. I never noticed that. But I do support it. Okay, so again, this is the 44 Magnum. There's something just that's never going to not be cool about wheel guns. Okay, so you could definitely tell it's very, very loud, very, very powerful handgun, and I can already feel it in my hand, so uh, I've got the feeling that moving up to this is really going to sting. It's about to be bass boosted to hell. It probably will. It's probably pretty hard to get good sound in a gun range. It's boomingly loud. I've never shot something well, like that yes, in a gun range. Go. Yeah, indoor ranges are ridiculous. Yeah, it's a big gong. And that is the most powerful handgun on earth. If you zoom in right here, these are the 44 Magnums. These are the 500s. So uh, 
I hope you enjoyed the video. My hand hurts like hell. And uh, <laughs> oh, please rate the video, favorite the video, because uh, the next thing we're coming out with, ballistic knife. I hope you enjoyed. And have a nice day. Thank you, Fuzzy Games. Appreciate it, man. Mortar failed. Like the video, I forgot to like the video, fuck! Okay, so this is an 82 millimeter Soviet mortar, and uh, we're going to shell a village just, just down the road there, and uh, they're going to have a very bad day. Okay, so that was pretty good. <laughs> Last one went about uh, eight feet, so let's see how far we get with this one. <laughs> that seems incredibly dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> no, we made it about uh, four feet with that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Minion. This is a cool one. Hello, my friends. This is FPS Rockstar again. Today I've got something very special. This is a right. AJ Fitz, 98. Thanks for the sub, man. It is firing a 308 cartridge, 4,000 rounds per minute. We're going to spend a lot of money in about uh, 30, 40 Do it for the bits. I will at some point. I need to go through and make sure that it doesn't have no-no stuff. No, I've said 50 times. I'll do the one for you. Jesus Christ! That's what the fuck I am talking about. You cannot get more firepower than this anywhere in the world. Okay, now we're going to see if we can get these barrels glowing. <laughs> There are no gamer words in 140. I, that's what I'm not so sure of. Cause there's a lot of that show I don't remember. <laughs> Damn, that's awesome. Okay, so everything you just saw was filmed about two months ago. When they decided that wasn't good enough. I wanted right. to do what Arnold Schwarzenegger. Sunrise yes, music, thank you, man. Most innocent man in Georgia, no doubt, no doubt. Standing up. This is a Kyle Stan so stream. We will always maintain his innocence. But now it's time. Is ammo free? When it comes to death and mayhem, nothing has the power of a minigun. That is I true. Hope you enjoyed the video, my friends, and as always, have a nice day.
by about a three thousand dollars. Well, I, you know, I'm pretty confident he made a little more than three grand on that one. Hello, my friend. It's Zephyrus Russia again, and I've got the video you've been asking for for a while. I've got an M249 saw and 150 rounds of anti-personnel, and uh, we're going to fuck up a bunch of bottles, and then I've got some explosives, and then we're going to back away the fuck up over there, and we're going to shoot the propane tank. So uh, we'll see what we can do. God, I used to watch these videos so often back when they were uploaded. Pepper strain and taser next. Good call. Oh, safe. Is the gun even there? Yes, this one is is right there. Shooting while pepper sprayed, that's the one, right? This is the one where he has to be like, come on, come on, don't be a bitch, don't be a bitch. Hello, my friend, this is Zephyrus Russia, and I have a pretty cool video for you today. I've got the Keltec Sub 2000 for you. It's a, it's a 40 caliber pistol round, and uh, what's interesting about this gun is it, uh, it folds in half. So you can store it in a jacket, you can put it in a briefcase, and uh, it's a pretty cool gun, but uh, I think it would make it more interesting shooting the target if uh, we had my buddy come over here and pepper spray me. So come on, give it to me. <laughs> That's pretty fucking bad. One more, come on, come on. Don't be a bitch. One more. <laughs> oh. Immediately. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> okay, so it, uh, <laughs> it turns out that that was a very, very bad idea. Pepper spray is some bad shit. I use the same pepper spray that uh, prisons <laughs> and uh, police departments use, so as soon as I turned around to the target, I went blind. And uh, <laughs> my eye is swelling up now, so I can barely see, but I thought uh, I'd be a trooper and uh, come back out and at least show you how the gun works, so let's see what I can probably do. I mean, I couldn't do that that fast with perfectly clear eyes. Okay, so I think what we learned from this one is uh, the Caltech Sub 2000 oh, is a pretty fucking yeah. cool gun. I love that. Uh, Bag of redemption. Thank you for the seven dollars and forty caliber. cents. And, uh, Here's ten Canadian dollars towards your weight loss surgery. We believe in you, brother. Go Leafs! Thanks, bud. Spray 
is not to be fucked with because it is some bad shit. I hope you appreciate how much suffering and uh, pain I went through for this video and uh, I appreciate if you favorite the video. Next time we're going to do the ACR and we're going to have a big ass explosion but for now I'm going to go take a shower. I hope you enjoyed the video my friends and as always have a nice day. <laughs> he just looked fucking miserable. Alright, where's the taser one? Where's the where is that taser boy? Uh... Do you guys remember what the name of the taser video is? TPS Russia. I'm going to need those reports on my desk, okay? And I'm going to need you to come in Saturday. Right, right. Uh. There it is. Hello, my friends. Oh, yeah. Lemur 2K, thank you for the 10 bucks. I was steaming the other day and spent... 120 because alcohol. Let's celebrate tonight. Okay. Oh, you meant you spent $120 on streaming donations the other day because of alcohol. Well, then I, for one, think you need a couple more beers, right? <laughs> Thank you, Lemur. FS Russia, and we've got a very fun video today. I did a poll on Twitter last night. I was looking for a fan that wanted to be in a video, and for the first time, we have one. This is our guest star today. This is Jeremy, and uh, he's going to be our target for today. I've got some uh, rubber buckshot here. It's going about 1,000 feet per second. We got some saber red pepper spray. Like I said before, this is some bad shit. I've been sprayed with this. And best of all, my favorite part, I've got the M26 taser. You don't look happy. This is what police carry, and uh, we're going to get full incapacitation, I think. I think you're going to have a very, very bad day. <laughs> Okay, so it didn't seem right just to use a regular shotgun, so I got the biggest shotgun that I could possibly find. This one's about seven feet tall, and uh, just so you know for sure, <laughs> That's ridiculous. zoom in on that for me so they can oh, see what it is. yeah. Lemur, thank you for the five bucks. There. Zap made me do it. We've got well, three rubber thank you, Zap and That's Lemur. not ping pong balls. Those are real. All right, zoom back out. And... Uh, just so you know, we're really doing this to our friend down there. <laughs> Just so okay. you know, we're really doing it Here to him. Here we go. <laughs> that didn't look like it felt too good. <laughs> but I think we can come up with something much better. Let's see what Just we can an do. insane gun. Okay, so here we go. This is the M26 Taser. Got Jeremy down there. He's ready to go. And so am I. <laughs> Stop resisting! I had to hit him one more time. I couldn't help it. I think he's incapacitated. <laughs> we can take him under arrest, do anything we wanted to now. And now it is time to uh, step it up one more notch. Let's go to the pepper spray. Kitty says she was away in Cali okay, when he so did now this. It's time to hit him with the pepper spray. I left in the package this time. So nobody Thank you, Lemur, for the gifted sub, man. Whether it's real pepper spray, it's, uh, it's not going to feel good. You don't look happy. Keep in mind, <laughs> that all poor of this guy. is filmed under the supervision He's not happy at all. of professional Russians and other safety personnel. How does that feel? Mm. You want more? Mm. Now how do you feel? Mm. All right. I think he's had enough. <laughs> Filthy right. Junk Trader, thank you for the sub, man. Or thank you, Ganley, for the gift to yeah, Junk Trader. Me. I hope you enjoyed the video, my friends. I know he did not. <laughs> and as always, 
Have a nice day. <laughs> okay, so it turns out Jeremy is one of the most hardcore fans I've got, so I figured I'd hook him up with an <laughs> FBS Russia tattoo. So there we go. Looks pretty good to me. Oh, that's a terrible that. tattoo. <laughs> It's just the worst looking tattoo. <laughs> oh, that was good. Ooh, the Glock with explosive ammo. Oh, the tank, White Castle. This was a classic. This is a classic. Everybody remembers this one. can be very tasty in the moment. Hello my friends, it is FPS Russia again and today we're going to play with a uh, very nice tank here. But first things first, let's get something to eat. Uh, I, I don't know who the guest is yet this week. Before I make a video I like to fuel up, get everybody fed. Last time we went to McDonald's we're going to White Castle. Yeah, the guest is OJ. Let me get a uh, number nine and uh, four large cokes. Four large cokes. Four? Four. Okay. <laughs> Getting impatient. <laughs> Sounds good. That's pretty awesome. Every time you go to the restaurant, you find a real connoisseur. She's been eating these things since she was a baby. She used to put in the blender, she drink down five or six at a time. <laughs> they almost need to make the window bigger. Just fucking roast in some, some fat lady. <laughs> like a bear. There you go, thanks. Thank you, have a nice day. You too. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so this is a 1944 M5 tank. This is the Stewart. It's a light tank. The armament aboard this thing, you've got the 37 millimeter main gun over there that fires this. And uh, we've also got some of these canister rounds for today. This is like an enormous shotgun. It's firing uh, a whole lot of 3 8 inch ball bearings at around 2,500 feet per second. So I got the feeling this is going to be devastating. It's also got 330 caliber machine guns on there, some 1919. So it's a very well armed vehicle. I've been playing a game called World of Tanks, so that got me inter interested in uh, tanks. I called them and figured out where they got their tanks to model from, and this is the exact tank they modeled off of for the game. So let's have some fun. Okay, so one thing is for sure, back in the 40s, everyone was much, much shorter. I'm about six foot two and I barely fit into this thing. It's really cramped. My legs have uh, pretty much fallen asleep. So let me quickly go every, over everything in here and I'm going to get out. So my optics are here. I've got the close, uh, more uh, detailed optic here and a wide angle view here. My uh, hydraulic controls are here. So I go left, it goes left, right, it goes right. And I've got my uh, big gun trigger here, my 30 cal trigger here. This is the big gun. And then I've got some manual controls back here and up here so I can really dial it in closely if I need to. So we're going to chew this wall up with our 30 cal and then we're going to hit it with the big gun. So let's see what we can do.
Okay, so now we're going to hit this thing with a big gun, and I want you guys to notice how you load this thing. Check this out. Loader, go right ahead. That thing popped up with enough force to take his thumb right off. You definitely want to be the shooter and not the loader. Let's take this wall out. Carefully, you don't want FPS Russia to copyright strike you. If it weren't for the implications of that, that would be a very funny go. bit. Our wall is gone. <laughs> to we copyright strike the co-host of your, this is the seven-year co-host of your own Let's podcast. Try else. Okay, so now we're going to test out that canister round. Keep in mind, this is like a uh, shotgun, about 30 times more powerful than a 12 gauge, and uh, we got it aimed right at those watermelons on the car. Keep in mind, this is a very, very old round. Not sure what it's going to do. Let's find out. <laughs> That's more like it. We took out a lot of those watermelons. Yeah, you can see in his face every time he's breaking when he's just having so much fun. I like that. It makes the, it makes the videos more enjoyable. But there's still some survivors, so let's hop on the 30 out there and finish them off. Okay, so the canister rounds seem to have left a few survivors, so we're going to take our Browning 1919 and finish those watermelons off. This looks just like infinite fun. Just doing this all day, every day. How would you ever get tired of it? Okay, so one more thing with this bad boy. We're going to take big gun, and we're going to shoot through that engine block and blow that car to shit. So let's get it done. God damn. already said it once, but the power that you got in this piece of machinery from World War II is absolutely incredible. We just blew the front end of that car right off. I'm very impressed with this tank. We had a lot of fun. I got to look into it. I might have to buy myself a tank. Let's have some more fun. Let's see if some more fun. You had to go to Ted Turner's ranch to make the video. Well, shout out Ted Turner. Thank you. We're letting Kyle make this vid on your ranch. I hope he's got Geico. Okay, so we had a lot of fun today with the M5. Got to say, you know what? Yes, if you want the highest quality soaps and goods, go to One Tree Lane Soapery. And you get that from our artisanal soaper, soapist, uh, Kitty. It's probably not soapist. It's not a so it's a it's a soapery. <laughs> Admiral Fappington, thank you, my friend. Yes, and thank you, Zap, for uh, giving some links. If you want to support Kitty's shop, only the highest quality stuff. Whenever I test out something that's from World War II or in that era, I'm always wondering, you know, how effective would it be? But I've got to say, this thing was incredible. We absolutely destroyed this car. Had a lot of fun in it today. Like I said, you wouldn't want to be loading this thing. You're going to lose a thumb pretty fast, but. Next time, we've got a much bigger tank. We've got the Hellcat, so stay tuned for that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, have a nice day. What is this code? Have a nice day. <laughs>
Not surprising, I guess. Uh, multiple cops shot last night. One ex-cop captain killed. Uh, guy d- got run over by a uh, FedEx truck that still had the driver in it, and the driver was like, "I'm not. I'm not about to get torn out of here and, and beat up. I'm driving away." Twenty people died in KC last night. Is that true? That's crazy. That's rough. Why well, choose to live in St. Louis if I travel slash Zoom meeting for work? Uh, it's where my family is. It's my home. It's where you know. I got I got roots. Everybody has roots in their hometowns. Oh, I remember I remember watching this one a number of times. Hello, my friends, it's FPS Russia again, and I've been watching this television show called Doomsday Preppers, and it's become one of my favorite shows. So today I thought it would be fun if I showed you my top three weapons that I would want in an apocalypse scenario. Doesn't matter whether it's zombies or aliens or a government collapse, I'm going to show you my top three picks. So let's start the show. This is very prescient right now. Everybody be taking notes. Okay, so the first weapon I want to go over is the Remington 870 12-gauge shotgun. This is a pump-action shotgun, and I've done a few modifications to mine to make it easier to pack around. Got the collapsible stock here, put a saddle on the side for extra ammunition. The reason I would choose this, obviously it's a 12-gauge shotgun. At close range, you don't have to be accurate, and it's got a ton of killing power. It's, it'll knock down anything within 50 meters pretty easily. I would recommend buckshot with one of these. And what's really cool about this, and why I definitely recommend it for these type scenarios, you can buy them almost anywhere. Most superstores, uh, you know, not even gun stores carry firearms in the United States. So you can pick one of these up for three hundred to four hundred dollars, and you're very well armed. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to show you how to deal with a threat at close range. This is where most of your threats are going to be had. If you're in an apocalypse scenario, maybe you're trying to go to the gas station get some gasoline. They don't want to deal with you then they'll have to deal with this. Buckshot and, uh, you know, a little bit of dragon's breath because you never know when those alien invaders are going to be flammable. True. High IQ move. Told you they were flammable. Okay, so you've seen the close range power of the That'll protect your storefront. But nothing says reliability like the AK-47. These things have been around forever. They've killed more people than you can imagine, and they work every time. You can throw this in the mud, you can throw this in the sand, lock it, load it, and it's ready to go again. Accuracy is not its strong suit. You're not going to want to take this out to 500 meters and pick people off. But when it comes to anything, you know, within 300 meters, you've got power, you've got reliability, like I said, and you've got good enough accuracy. I was a little bit torn between this and the AR because obviously 5.56 ammo is so oh, plentiful. But the yeah. thing about uh, the 5.56 round is it was made to maim. Military doctrine is that they want to kill a certain number of people and maim a certain number of people. This way you have to bring in manpower and materiel to remove the injured. What the hell? If you're in an apocalypse scenario, you want seven. Oh, Nilla. Thank you, Nilla0909, for the $5. What was your degree and has it helped you get your current job? I'm an undergrad. I am an undergrad and won an MBA in marketing. Uh, I didn't. I, I my main degree was in psych, and then I did uh, like a bunch of stuff with business in addition to that. But like, yeah, dude, like just just work on getting your first fucking job. You don't even need an MBA for the most part unless you're going to be high level, like doing shit. So you'll be you'll be fine. You know, just try and get try and get a job first. You know, don't don't waste too much time. You know, I my degree was a total waste of time, and I realized like, oh, I, I'm gonna have to jump into sales. I gotta jump into sales, and if you're decent at sales, you can survive pretty much everywhere. And if so, if you are, take an honest kind of account of yourself. If you're good at sales, I wouldn't waste time with the MBA because you're gonna make more money faster and be in less debt just jumping into sales. 0.62 power. You don't want to have to be uh, shooting someone more than once. So, let me show you what this thing can do. Okay, so we've got our invader down there hiding behind some cement. Also, a little aside, marketing, advertising. We're about to enter a really, really big depression. And a lot of consumer products companies, if that's what you're talking about being in marketing, advertising, or sales for, a lot of those are going to start to really fucking struggle. So I would not overly invest in that because it's going to get rough. This virus, a lot of people are out of work. 
and it's not going to fix itself overnight. So, you know, be be conservative. And the blocks, I'm going to take this AK with a 7.62 round and show you why I like the 7.62 round. I'm going to chew straight through those blocks. I'm still working from home. It's the tits, dude. It's awesome. So you can see, if you're firing a big enough round, it doesn't matter what you hide behind. Okay, so now you can really see what kind of damage we did. Keep in mind, this is the same sort of block that they build houses, buildings with. This stuff is everywhere. And it absolutely ripped it apart. On the back, you can see it's completely blown out because it's always the, uh, the exit hole is bigger than the entrance hole. And our friend here had a very, very bad day. So let's move on to the sniper rifle, test our accuracy at long range. Okay, so I've shown you guys close range and I've shown you guys medium range, but the weapon I would want for long range when you've really got to reach out there and touch someone is the Remington 700 bolt action sniper rifle chambered in 308. Now the reason I choose 308 is it's got enough power and accuracy to knock your target down and he is not getting back up. Remington 700 because it is the most accurate out of the box hunting rifle mm. in the world. So little James Cameron lens flare. Reliable, and for less than $1,000, you've got 1,000 meter accuracy and you can't beat that. So let me show you just how accurate I can be with this thing. So like I said, <laughs> sometimes you have to take on your enemy it's at the long range, Whether you're setting up an ambush for supplies or defending whatever you're holed up from, uh, you know, bandits or in this scenario, bandits. We want to do it with the Remington 700, so got our friend down there. Let's see what we can do. And you never know when they're going to be hiding behind cover, but with this 308 round, it doesn't matter. That's just amazing. I can see down there, even from way out here, those 308 rounds are punching straight through the concrete, going straight through our bad guy, and going somewhere way off over there. So let me show you one more way to defend yourself in the apocalypse. If you really want to protect yourself during the apocalypse, you're going to want to get yourself a minefield. That's true. Very little violence is going to happen on a minefield, aside from people blowing up. So I had a lot of fun today showing you guys the three different weapon classes from short range to long range, talking about some tactics for survival. If you guys are interested in the show I'm, I was talking about, Doomsday Preppers, the new season actually is about to premiere. It's Tuesday, November the 13th at 9 p.m. on National Geographic. So check the show out. It's a lot of fun to watch. But if you guys want to help me out on this video, be sure to drop me a like down there. It always helps a lot. But hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. We've been forgetting. We got to drop him a like. All right, added to liked videos. You know, every like helps, even if it's 10 years later. <laughs> Ooh. 50 cal machine gun versus 250 watermelons. For a while there, Kyle was keeping the melon industry booming. Hello, my friend. And the off brand 99 cent 2 liter soda. Uh, Union, you know, they sent him, you know, Chipotle every other day. They have disruptions. Today we're going to have some fun. We're going to take on the watermelon insurgency I've been noticing lately. But first, we have to go stock up on the most important thing. So let's go. What you, what you want, what you, what you want. A local farmer used to cut you guys deals on watermelon. See, it's good we have Kitty here. She's, she's giving us the inside scoop. The behind the music, so to speak. OJ Pop Twitch, thank you very much, appreciate it. Don't anybody tell Kyle about this. I don't want him copyright striking it. This is our little secret, guys.
to see. I like the old Cyrillic text. <laughs> you would not be surprised if you did not get all of a cheeseburger. This is also American woman. Oh, now he's now he stopped the Cyrillic. Come on, as soon as I move the camera. My other gun is bigger. Told them we shouldn't let the tacos out. Have a nice day. See, you can cat call women from a tank really easily because of the implication. <laughs> okay, so before we start the mayhem, I just want to answer the top two questions I'm constantly getting asked. How do you get what you get and is it legal? First of all, everything you see in my videos is 100% completely legal. And uh, secondly, I buy most of the guns I shoot. The rest of them are borrowed from a few friends of mine. This is an example of something I bought. I bought this from Ohio Ordnance Works and these are the good guys. They sell to government agencies, police forces, and if you have the correct paperwork to civilians as well. This is a Browning M2, also known as the Madus. It's a 50 caliber belt-fed machine gun. Uh, it fires at 650 rounds per minute. These things have been in service since World War II, still in service today. It's an amazing weapon and we're going to have some fun with it today. Also, the explosion <laughs> you see in my video, Completely so many audio legal. comments. I use a substance called Tannerite. It's a binary compound. They shoot it to your door. It's not dynamite, not illegal. So now that we have that cleared up, let's pull some shit up. Got our Madus, got our armored personnel carrier. It's time to fuck up some watermelons. I think this guy drives. That is what the fuck I am talking about. Now, we need some explosive watermelons. <laughs> okay, so we've got about 150 watermelons piled up there. Such a waste of a good melon. A little bit of tannerite in, uh, you know, to spice things up a bit. Let's see what we can do. This is how you start a huge ant problem. That is how you fuck some watermelon up. I've got to say, we've done a lot of things. But this is some of the coolest shit we've done so far. I hope you enjoyed the video, my friends. And as always, have a nice day. Have a nice day. What other ones jumping out of me? Oh, the flamethrower one. That's a real good one. We should come to a school filled with young children. Hello, my friends. This is Epius Rosho. And something about movies that always pisses me off is the guns are always wrong. They, don't, they shoot forever with ammunition, that or the guy who uses them is a complete bitch. Look at this guy. <laughs> He's sponsored, sponsored by the movie, that's funny. Alright, let me show you how a man uses a flamethrower.
looks hot. On fire a little bit. <laughs> Just a little. Let's try something really. That's how they teach you to do it in the military. Just blow. <laughs> like it's an out of control birthday cake. Now we're going to have a little bit of a barbecue because I've got a lot of people here today watching me shoot. Now we're going to feed everyone. Oh, it's gonna ruin the outside, and the inside's gonna be raw. It smells delicious. <laughs> oh, does he eat it? I forgot that one. I caught on fire a little. Don't worry. Looks like his feet are on fire. <laughs> this has not been safe at all. I hope you enjoyed the video, my friends. I think I lost most of my eyebrows. And as always, have a nice day. Not bad. Wait, did one of you motherfuckers actually think he was eating the pig from the video back here? He's like eating a rack of ribs that you, you get from the store. Which one of you thought he just went over there and peeled off the napalm skin? You goob. <laughs> the pig would be raw as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can see him pull it off. Idiot. Retard. Oh, that's funny. All right, I'm taking a quick piss. We'll be back in. Just dropped 100 viewers. That happens when you go to the bathroom, man. People got no patience. No patience. We'll get we'll get it back up. Whether we need to put some blue chew in my computer or what, but we'll get it hard again. Hitman, that was a good one. Oh, the AK videos, these were pretty cool. Fully automatic shotgun, we'll watch that though. Joe Rogan died? Oh, guys, he already died today. Come on, boys. The fuck is that, Agent Orange? Hello, my friends. Is APS Russia? Today I got something very nice. This is the Sega 12 gauge. This is a Russian made shotgun, and this one has been chopped down a lot. The stock has been swapped out for a folder, barrel's been chopped down to almost nothing, and it's fully automatic. So we're going to see what we can do with a real piece of Russian hardware. Let's start the show. Okay, so first things first, everyone's always wanting to see something educational, so we're going to get the educational on you today. Got my bulletproof vest here, I borrowed this from a police friend of mine, and got my Sega 12 loaded up with buckshot. I'm going to see if this vest can take this, but uh, I'm not going to be wearing it. I wanted to wear it, but started talking to YouTube, and they didn't think that was a good idea, so Charlie here volunteered, so... He's going to wear the vest, I'm going to shoot the gun, and we're all going to learn something. Okay, so I've got Charlie down there at about 10 meters, got my Sega 12, loaded up with double aught buckshot. The first paintball trip I remember, T or not Tucker, T-Mart uh, and I, Trevor and I, had the really shitty guns, and we did not bring enough change of clothes, and we got filthy while we were there. 
and we were going straight from there to work or not to not to work out to to go out to eat and the only clothes there to wear were Kyle's shirts like this and so it was like T Mart and I had to sit there in like a Chili's with a shirt that says I piss excellence and it's like oh no now you just I feel like such a goober Let's see what we can do. My guess is that didn't go too well for him. Okay, so I haven't looked yet to see if it actually penetrated, but what I want to show you and what everyone should know about soft body armor like this, it doesn't have a plate in it, is it may stop the bullet, but it doesn't stop the force. It's actually pushed the vest into its chest cavity. Now, a person obviously isn't made out of fiberglass, but this shows you just how much force was exerted. Jesus. Yeah, big dog shirts only, dude. Only big dog so we, shirts. Uh, we pushed his chest pretty much all the way in. The real question is how much penetration came through the vest. Oh, this isn't beer. This is just water with orange-flavored Mio in it. Not very exciting. So this is the actual bulletproof part. This is the Kevlar. I see one right here. It's hard to oh, tell, but I don't think it yeah. actually penetrated. This actually just tore the fabric on the back. Palace 77 thank you for the two bucks. So we're doing a trip down memory lane. When do we watch your videos? Well, we'll have to do that. Uh, thanks for the entertainment over the years. Wish I could donate more, but bills, am I right? <laughs> am I right indeed? Well, certainly don't prioritize me over bills. That would be foolhardy. Pussy, pussy, tang, low tea. Come on, you you don't like a nice, nice little orange flavored drink? Some, some tangerine flavored water. Drink retard. I don't. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to drink tonight. I don't want the calories, man. Down here on the edge, it actually did though. Oh, but sorry, yeah, we will watch the videos. We've talked about PK140 so many times, but I've had a couple people who actually mod for me check that out, and there are some uh, there are some some gamer words in that we'll say, and so I'm not I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I'll have to, you know, maybe reach out to my boy Tucker, see what he thinks. He's my my resident expert on Twitch terms of service. He's passed through. He's got the bullet hole there, so. Will soft body armor stop buckshot? Pretty much, yeah. But I don't think it's really going to matter. You get shot like that wearing this, you're dead. So people often ask me, what's the best fully automatic shotgun? And they always say that it's the AA-12. But people bring the Sega up a lot, and I like the Sega, I do. But let me show you why the AA-12 is better. Let me show you a clip real quick from my AA-12 video. Hey, we saw that earlier, boys. Okay, so like you just saw, the A12 has almost zero recoil. Let me show you what the Sega does. The reason it's not wanting to cycle is because I'm not putting enough uh, pressure on it, so. So you see there, this thing especially chopped down like it is in this light has a lot who needs an auto shotgun what a not american question to ask what if there are dozens of deer charging you you didn't consider that did you bitch alizip alizip thank you for the sub man lots of recoil and that cuts way down on the controllability the a12 you can put it where you want it and keep it there you can send a lot of fire oh is east st louis burned down yet i was thinking a funny little bit to do on my twitter is like go on the hashtags for the riots and things and take a picture from East St. Louis from like 2013 and be like, look at the aftermath, the carnage. <laughs> Just <laughs> People will be like, oh my God, oh my God. And then you're like, gotcha, bitch. Power down range. Don't get me wrong, like I said, this is one hell of a weapon, but got to go with the AA-12. Okay, so last week we shot some watermelon people. Well, this week we're stepping things up a notch. I'm gonna take this Sega, and over there I've got the king of the watermelon people, so we're going to shoot- Here's something I never really talked to Kyle about. Stuff like this, 
I like to think that it was him getting very frustrated trying to make a melon man out of sticks. <laughs> but it was probably Jeremy or someone, but it's funny to imagine him getting really pissed off <laughs> trying to build the melon man. The shit out of him till there's nothing left but pulp, so let's get to it. This gun seems stressful to fire. Yeah, I'm surprised he doesn't have a drum mag. Seems Black like he has one of those for everything. Watermelon King. I think we need to try one more thing. Okay, so one last thing. I've got my old refrigerator back there. Got a very special 12 gauge round in here, and we're going to make a mess. But before we get to that, I wanted to answer a question that I'm constantly getting asked in the YouTube comments, and that is, where I get these shirts from? So if you would like one of these shirts, my store is linked in the description of this video. You just click the link, it takes you to the shirt store. But I've had some people say that they can't afford the shirts, so for those guys, I'm actually going to give away five shirts on this video, and all you have to do to possibly win the shirts is click the share button. And that's going to pop up my Facebook feed or my Twitter feed. And I'm going to give five of those guys free shirts. So let's blow some shit up. Is his store, is his store still live? I don't know. Go pop in there and let us know. Hey, what was that? And all you have to do to possibly win the shirts is... Like one of these shirts, yeah, my was. store is linked in the description of this video. You just click the link, Crippled. it takes you to the shirt store. Yeah. <laughs> but I've had some people say that they can't afford the shirts, so for those guys, I'm actually going to give away five shirts on this video, and all you have to do to possibly win the shirts is click the share button. And that's going to pop up my Facebook feed or my Twitter feed, and I'm going to give five of those guys free shirts. So let's blow some shit up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so my cameraman had a little bit of an accident, so I've got to get to the hospital. <laughs> so, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, have a nice day. Remember to leave a like on the video, guys. You know, it helps grow the channel. Oh, you know what? I haven't seen him forever. What was the, uh... Yeah, the epic meal time they did. Eight years ago. Loud. Loud. I just gotta, you know... I know better than anyone. Time flies when you're being a retard online. Welcome to McDonald's. Today we're featuring our new mango pineapple smoothie. Order one ready. Fifteen double cheeseburgers. Okay. Sounds good. Stupid Thank bitch. you. There you go. Thank you. Have a nice day. I got the bottle of Jack. And I got the Desert Eagle. The bacon and pistols. Take a look at this <laughs> table, internet. What do you see? This Canadian just finger in the trigger guard. <laughs> just... <laughs> Finger in the trigger guard all around. These these Canucks. These Canucks. They don't know what they're doing with guns. We got all this vodka. All this meat. We got all these guns. More guns. Fast food. And a grenade. We're doing a collab with everybody's favorite immigrant. FPS Russia. What you know about bullets, bitch? FPS Russia does ammo clips. And we do bacon strips. Lots of bacon strips. <laughs> Reload. Reload. My special friend sits on the special card for our epic front page YouTube beer run. This is Skinny Potatoes 101 player. Tyler? No. No, that's not a potato, that's a grenade. Oh. Skinny Potatoes, we got guns. Putting this bacon through boot camp. <laughs> Muscle glasses pounding bacon like he pounds, you know? Know? 
Listen to that crisp. We cook with a little vodka. No, seriously, a little vodka. Okay, a nice amount. <laughs> All right, we drowned our potatoes in vodka because we're stupid, really stupid. Must glasses. Now with more gun. <laughs> I'm tenderizing meat, bitch! Look at me do it! Look at me do it! He's tender. We cooking up all that jack. Well, that PS Russia is creeping in the back. <laughs> Plus, glasses have detachable penis. It also happens to be a combat knife. Throw that beef in the butter. And we can't eat bacon. Meanwhile, at the gun store, FPS Russia school in session. Listen carefully, news. Okay, this is MP5K. K stands for compact and German. Don't give me bullshit. I don't know what the gun is. So first of all, always keep your finger off the trigger. You see me do it sometimes. This is because I'm an asshole. Also, always wear hearing protection, eye protection, backwards. Ah! Okay, so I've got the Glock 19. <laughs> the the gun's so little, it's hardly automatic. Plinging at it. Keep in mind with the Plinkin. handgun basic shit. Three fingers down here, one finger off the trigger till you're ready to shoot. Got your magazine here. Oh, oh, oh. Ah! Yeah. I want more bullets. <laughs> oh. 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 Look at that, Shane Dawson. Sasu kebab on a bayonet? Really dumb. <laughs> Washing bacon from thermal vision. Ain't you seen Predator? Yep, that's a smart thing. <laughs> that's we got lines been on our bacon. Bacon first. Then some vodka bacon potato mash. Slopping it in there. More bacon, because there's never enough. Yeah, get some. Epic meal time ain't epic meal time unless we drizzle all over it. I'm a right cosmic panda. Guns are f***ing cool. Desert Eagle. <laughs> the bacon the pistols. Did I? <laughs> it's like in these old videos how Harley is just in a blackout <laughs> making this. <laughs> oh, man. I love Harley. Desert Eagle. The bacon of pistols. Did I say that already? Let me say it again. I love this gun, man. It's strong. I feel like I can take on anyone. What do we cook? That bacon looks delicious. Guns and bacon and burgers and friends and liquor. Well, this is a f***ing good internet video, isn't it, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Can I pull the trigger? This, this gun, all this internet win. Internet f***ing win. Russia. For epic meal time. Fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> 
Next time, we bullets. <laughs> Oh, that was fun. That was a good one. The more Kyle videos we watch, eventually we're just going to get... We're just going to be watching clips of PKA. <laughs> and I can be like, oh, I remember that. I remember telling that joke. Uh -huh. Oh, we watched Full Force. Did you miss out, dude? We watched Full Force, but it was like weeks before I, I got a Twitch partner, and so the video is probably gone. Probably uh, expired. Yeah, we watched Kyle get pepper sprayed, and we watched him uh, do the the tasing. Where's... I just had one off the top of my head. What was that? Oh, it was the flamethrower comparison. Hello, my friends. It's FPS Russia again. And I've got something pretty cool today. I haven't exactly seen this particular video on YouTube yet. So what I've got is I want to compare the X-15. Oh, thank you. Uh, incongruous French fry. Thank you for the bits. Always been an audio listener of PKA. Tuning into your stream for the first time. Jesus Christ. I thought everybody was joking. They, they said your head was huge. Good Lord. Well, <laughs> You, you think you can come in here and start making jokes at my expense? Well, let me tell you, buddy, you're more than welcome to. Stay as long as you like. Thanks for the bits. Flamethrower system to the XM42 flamethrower system. It's completely different companies, very different technologies, and a very different price range as well. So with the XM42, you're less than $1,000. And when you take a good close look at the welds, the construction, uh, they invented a flamethrower. Uh, you don't really need anything, any accessories like that. You charge this thing up, it's got an electronic motor on the inside, and it uses one of these butane cylinders to power the pilot light on the front. This thing is great. If you're looking into starting campfires, just showing... Anybody buy... No, the October thing's a meme. Uh, it's a joke. Did anybody uh, actually buy one of those Elon Musk flamethrowers? Did anybody buy one of those? Because I watched a couple of YouTube videos of that, and... Fucking looked pretty lame. It did not shoot that far. I want an enormous plume of flame. Not a grill lighter. Lame throwers. Exactly. Thank you. This thing is going to be real, if I recall correctly. And even these, if I'm remembering, these ones blow the fuck out of the Elon Musk one. Which is just like a... Just a premature e jack of barely flame. Off occasionally, maybe a little bit of home defense. This is the flamethrower for you. And I'm going to show you. It's got 25 feet of range. It's pretty damn impressive. However, if you want a legit flamethrower, the, the kind that you would see in Vietnam, World War II, and you're comfortable with strapping over three gallons of highly flammable fuel at 500 psi onto your back and then walking into a shitstorm carrying this then the X-15 is definitely the flamethrower for you. It's more expensive, almost 80% more, but the performance is almost double. You're shooting about 50, 60 feet when you put the napalm in there. Um, you, you get to shoot much longer, maybe a, a solid minute, two minutes. If it costs over 80% more, but the performance is almost double, then it seems like that's a very fair price, right? Something like that, whereas you get about 30 seconds out of the XM-42. We're going to run through these through the paces today. And uh, if you're interested in one, the best part about all of this, unlike some of the machine guns, the artillery pieces that I show off sometimes, you can buy these as long as you don't live in California or Maryland. Yes. Uh, and this could change. So, you know, check Google, make sure you're not going to order a flamethrower when you can't have one. Unless you're in Cali or Maryland, you can get one of these. So links in the description below, you can do a little more research, but let's get the fun started. So this is the XM42 again. Like I said, very lightweight, nice and compact, and the range is around 25 feet. Anything within 25 feet. Wait, what year was this video? 16. Quite a bit of time. Quite a bit of time has passed. Mm -hmm. 
These things are so much fun to play with. That does look like a blast. I like to go in my backyard at night and shoot it straight up in the air and I can hear my neighbors just screaming. Dude, I could get rid of some pesky neighborhood cats with that. No, this is this is the last FPS so Russian video, really? Now we're going to back up, strap on the big X-15 and show you what kind of range it's got. Okay, so now we've got the X-15 strapped on. You can see this is a totally different setup. This is like a Vietnam World War II era kind of setup. You got about 50 or 60 pounds on your back with the fuel. It's a lot to carry around, but you're going to see not only do we have more range with this unit, the stream of fire is much wider, much hotter, and I like to think of this as an ozone layer howitzer. It's blasting huge holes up there. Check this out. <laughs> Dude, if you won't pay the 80% more, if you're in the market for a flamethrower to get this instead of that little bitch made thing before, then you are a fucking loser, dude. Either just save up, get the real flamethrower. Yeah, that looks, oh, that's, uh, that's sick. You can see it just raining gasoline down on that fence. And you can fire little bursts. And what I found is you can even oh, like you're a wizard kind of fill the air with gasoline and then ignite that. So now that you understand the kind of range we've got here, the kind of ridiculous power, how much fire we're actually sending down range, let's get some interesting targets in the mix. Okay, so first things first, we've loaded this thing up with napalm. Now napalm, it, uh, it thickens up the gasoline mixture, it makes it more gelatinous, and most importantly, napalm, it makes not it stick sugar. to its targets and makes it burn a little bit hotter. So I think our living room here is going to be toast. <laughs> You can see I'm able to shoot bursts at things. And really pick out what I want to incinerate. You can definitely see the napalm there sticking to that. If that were a person or anything that was made of flesh, I can't imagine the hell. It's just a public park. Yeah, somebody comes out. My furniture, my furniture. You can see those little bits of napalm just shooting out everywhere, on fire, sticking to everything. So I'd say we pretty much destroyed our living room suit here. Pretty impressed with this napalm. So we're going to move along. I've got something really, really oh, cool it's next, like so coming. make sure you check this out. Here we go. All right, so there's only one thing better than one XM42, and that's definitely two XM42s. We got our firework lady down there. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> Caught a little bit of uh, shrapnel there. 
that was pretty awesome. That was about $400 worth of firecrackers, so they definitely did their job well. Let's move along. All right, so I've wanted to do this for a very long time. We've got... Back, back when Kyle used to be doing these videos, he would just send texts that were so titillating all the time where it would just be a picture of a thousand cantaloupes or just a picture of a receipt from a, a fucking fireworks store where he spent a grand on, on explosives. Just It always kept me, kept me excited for the releases of these videos. I wish, I wish this era in, in American history didn't have to end. It was truly a renaissance. 80 pounds of thermite on top of that car. It's a mixture of iron oxide and aluminum powder. Now, once we get this uh, chain reaction started, we have no way of stopping it. I'm pretty sure it's going to melt down through the car and make a real ugly mess of things, so let's get to it. Not my Chevy Cavalier. Not my Cavalier. So you can see the liquid metal pouring down through, hitting those propane tanks. The gas tank's in there too. That could go off at any minute. This is exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> We're going to keep backing up now because that would not be safe. <laughs> it takes a very special kind of cameraman to work on some of the projects we do here. And I just want to thank Chad for not having a problem when it rains thermite from the sky. <laughs> At least we got that horn stopped. Okay, we're going to let this burn for a while. We'll take a look at the aftermath, and I think it's going to be pretty cool. Okay, so it took a while, but this thing finally went out. It finally cooled down, and we can get a look at the devastation that was created That's by that crazy. thermite. That 5,000-degree molten iron going in here. I'm seeing valves and, and uh, piston heads, and the entire block is halfway melted off. That was incredibly destructive. You can also see back here where we had pots on top. All of that thermite's melting down. It's hitting the gasoline tank. It's hitting propane tanks that I threw in the back for fun. That was very cool. I, uh, I saved about 10 or 15 pounds of that thermite. We'll use that later for something. I got to figure out some kind of thermite bomb or something like that to make for you guys. But if you are out there looking at this because you're interested in purchasing a, purchasing a flamethrower, definitely pull the trigger on that one because pull the you trigger never on know that, guys. How much longer they're going to be legal. There's always people out there trying to take away your rights, but. If you got the flamethrower, you can definitely protect your rights and uh, melt cars if you're into it. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you uh, share the video, give it a, a like down below. And as always, have a nice day. <laughs> yeah, the, the American accent slips through every so often. Uh, was it the... I think this is the one people were talking about. Well, let's see. What what video was it? Do you remember which video it was? Suitcase gun? That's what it was? Okay, because I'd rather watch the whole thing. Perfect. Thank you, man. Hello, my friends. This is FPS Russia again. And inside this case, I've got something really cool here. This is a DRD. Thank you, Young R. It's an 18 inch Young R. Old. Automatic rifle. And the fact that it fits in this case is very cool. So, you've got the folding mag pull stock there. That's all pretty straightforward. What's interesting is that. The fore end of the gun, the barrel, the gas block, everything is right. Where is this one? 2013, okay. Weight loss still going good. I uh, slipped up a bit the past week with the, the holiday weekend and everything, over eight. But uh, yeah, I'm back on track now. I'm down a total of like nine pounds. Here. 
I like this a lot because if you're, you know, if you're special forces, something like that, you've got to infiltrate a building, a bell tower, whatever, you could throw this thing in a backpack, you could throw it in a, a case just like this, or any regular suitcase, and then you assemble the thing and, well, with a little bit of practice, you can do it in about 60 seconds. You don't need any tools to assemble it, everything is just hand tight so there aren't any special wrenches to keep up with, no allen keys, anything like that. And for a rifle that, like I said, and it's pretty obvious here, you can break down so easily, pretty much in half, it's still very accurate. Just suitcase guns as a concept are so fucking cool. 51 millimeter accuracy and power. Like I said, lots of firepower in a small case. So let's take this thing out, have a little bit of fun with it. I think this is going to be a good day. Okay, so first things first, I got this thing loaded up with 20 rounds of hollow point ammunition. Let's pop some soda bottles and see just how much concussive power we got here. Scope seems enormous. Dude, Kyle was keeping mountain lightning in business. I absolutely love a 308 rifle, and the fact that it's so compact, that's what I can't get over, is that this big long rifle goes into a backpack. I, I absolutely love this thing. I'm going to start carrying this a lot more. Let's try something... Uh, a little bit bigger. Little okay, bigger. so we traded out the hollow points we were using on the soda bottles for some penetrator rounds. We're gonna see what we can do over there against that concrete. My guess is it's gonna go straight through. Jesus. I always say, I like the 5.56 five, round, but if you've got to go into combat, if you've got to trust your life with the weapon, I want the 7.62 by 51 millimeter. Let's try something else. I'm feeling like a nice explosion today. Okay, so one last thing. Yeah, I am noticing very few earplugs in any of these videos. He must have some, some rough tinnitus right now. I figured we couldn't make a video with such a high-powered rifle without blowing up a truck, so... Let's get a nice big explosion, maybe a little shrapnel going. <laughs> There's the clip. a lot of shrapnel. <laughs> I really like this rifle, I've got to say. Like I said, it's so... See that in another time or two. So, let's get a nice big explosion, maybe a little shrapnel going. Jesus Christ. That, that is ridiculous. It's that close. That close. That's fucking inches, inches away. I would have been pissed if we had to end PKA because this motherfucker shot and destroyed himself. Or wait, no, I wasn't even, er, this was a little before I joined the show, I guess. So I would have never known all the fun I could have had. Yeah, I wasn't even on PK. This was almost eight years ago now. It, it rolled towards him. It was like... Bouncing. Maybe a lot of shrapnel. Well, I really like this rifle, I've got to say. Like I said, it's so compact, you can fold it up, stick it anywhere, but 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, have a nice day. So it was comma to go back a frame. This looks like it's just on a trajectory for him. <laughs> God, he would have been so fucked. <laughs> he would have he would have died. He would have died. <laughs> Was that not hit Jeremy? I don't know. Yeah, it would have it would have cut him in half. Just would have fucking eviscerated him. That would have been all over the news. Russian expat killed in tragic accident. Let's be honest. Who's oh, Kyle's talked about this on PKA a good bit. I'm really afraid of North Korea. I've got the FNP90, I've got an HK MP5, and I've got my M4 carbine. The Secret Service uses these for different applications, and we're going to demonstrate that today and tell you a little bit about the weapons. Infinity117, thank you so much for the sub, man. Okay, so first things first, we've got our FNP90 here. This is a uh, weapon that the Secret Service used to replace the Uzi for a number of reasons. It's chambered in 5.7 by 28 millimeter, and... These rounds have the ability to pierce armor, whereas the, the Uzi's 9mm just did not. If you can see here, they're stacked in there horizontally, and then they turn uh, vertical at the end, feed into the weapon system. It's got a very high rate of fire, very accurate, and they can pierce through body armor. And it's extremely concealable, so if you're a Secret Service agent, you can throw it right under your coat. You can look like a casual guy, blend into the crowd. So we got our guys over there hanging out in their vehicle. We're going to chew straight through those doors, take them out, smash the windows, and that's where this thing really I am the end. The Thank you so much, man. Just can't do that on some situations. Really appreciate the sub, and... So you can see, that rate of fire is absolutely ridiculous much faster than the MP5, and the recoil is extremely uh, controllable. You've got this smaller round, less recoil, all the penetration downrange. Let's try something else. Okay, so now we've stepped things up a notch. I've got my MP5 here. Now, this is chambered in 9mm. Oh, that looks Honestly, sick with that giant-ass magazine. That 5.7 millimeter round. It does not have the penetration capabilities, but it's got more mass to it. It's got more weight going down the range, giving you better knockdown power. And even though those guys are pretty damn far away, we're going to be able to deliver headshots to those guys. And it's not going to be a big issue. As you can see here, i got my beta mag, so it really doesn't matter how accurate I am. It's used by many government agencies, including the Secret Service, and those guys are going down. So we got a couple of headshots on them. That's not good enough, though, is it? Looks like so much fun. That's what we're talking about. Like I said, when you've got a hundred rounds on a gun as reliable as an HK, you can spray all day long, not even worry about it. So those guys are gone, their car's gone. Let's go to something else. I like cars. I've got an idea. Okay, so one more secret service weapon. I've got my M4 carbine here. Yeah, we watched the one where he almost died like three minutes ago. You just missed it, man. 
exchange engagements, has a lot more power. You can use these steel penetrator rounds we're using today to punch straight through an engine block of a car we're driving toward a checkpoint or toward the White House. And I think that's what we'll use it for today. Very real, I know. <laughs> Some, someone's right, very reminiscent of a Bollywood action scene. <laughs> All he's got to do is break out into the cabbage patch or a dance number <laughs> right now. <laughs> so that was pretty good. Secret Service definitely knows how to pick their weapons. Hope you enjoyed my video, and as always, have a nice day. One rockin'. Thank you for the sub, my friend. Yeah, Kyle's channel was the fucking best. Nothing else came close. Nothing else came fucking close. Uh, let me just see. Hello, my friends. This is FPS Russia again, and I got something really nice today. So, this is an M14. You see, it's got the basic stock and everything. I've added a few things, but if you look at how long and uh, difficult to point this is, you get an idea that it's not really All good right. for close OJ quarters. Pop Twitch. Can't really do anything. Uh, OJ Pop Twitch. Thank you so much for the five gifted subs. Really appreciate it, buddy. Big dick move. Very big dick of you. Appreciate it. King shit. Uh, interesting with it and it's just not cool enough so this is the juggernaut rogue this chassis basically turns that gun into a bullpup so it's all the same all right. stuff in a much smaller much easier to point package and they look really cool now as cool as this is I had to step mine up a notch oh all blue right. the shaman not to be outdone thank you so much for the gifted subs blue the shaman very big dick king maneuver right there much obliged This one's mine. All right. So I had to get it. I uh, got it laser engraved. FPS Russia. Got all my stuff on here, and uh, we're going to have some fun today. So let's get started. Right. LJ Pop Twitch, you son of a bitch, dropping four, five more. Thank you so much. Ten in the last couple minutes. Really, really appreciate it. Some big dicks in here, indeed. Big dicks in here, indeed. That cool dude. So all thank right. you all very much. Thank you. Okay, so before we get started, I just wanted to point out a couple more. Oh, blue, blue, firing right back with five more. My goodness. Jesus Christ, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The little sub war going on, and, you know, who's the beneficiary going to be? So th thank you very much, both All of you. Right. Really appreciate it. Things about the gun. It's so damn shiny. If you run out of ammo, you could always blind your enemy, but this muzzle break is absolutely ridiculous. The, uh, the idea of a muzzle brake is to get rid of the recoil, you know, that normally the barrel rise. But this one is so effective, it does, uh, it does too good of a job. It pulls the barrel actually down, but you'll see. All right. That's loud as shit. All right. This thing is absolutely ridiculous. It's so short in a bullpup. So pointable, and then you got the power. Of Don't the read my name, you fat ass. Well, then I, I won't. Let's try I will not. Else. Okay, so last time we killed Osama bin Laden and a couple of zombie bitches. This time Osama's got a couple of pigs. I don't know what he's doing with them, but I suspect the worst. I think those pigs have been right. taken advantage of in the worst kind of way. So we're going to put them all out of their misery and uh, do it in style. That's nice. Jesus Christ. Oh, look, it's on fire now. We're making bacon. 
Okay, so I went back and looked at the All video, right. and I decided that uh, we need one more clip in there, one big explosion. So this is going to be the biggest explosion you've ever seen in one of my videos. This is about six hundred dollars worth right. of explosives. So I'd Ooh, appreciate six hundred bucks. The like button or the share button right now. Help me pay for some oh, of these me. explosives. But uh, stuck my premier reticle on. My week's been good. Thanks for asking, and, uh, man. Hope yours has been good as well. About two hundred meters. And let me just say, this is going to be a pretty big boom. All right! First try. Very impressive. I'm a mushroom cloud laying mother... That was some good stuff. Let's try one more thing. Okay, so now we're going to shoot some steel to show you just how much power this 308 round has. But I wanted to mention this, I forgot it earlier. With this uh, system, you've got charging handles on either side. So you can go from this side or here, which is much, much nicer. If you remember the infield video we did, that was one of my bigger complaints because you had to go over That's here. That's a sick and looking gun. I didn't gun. like that very much, but this is very nice. So you can see this thing's an absolute tack driver, very accurate, even with just an EOTech on there. Got to say, this is a lot of power in a small package. As I say all the time with bullpups, very pointable. I like it a lot. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, have a nice day. It's a pretty badass explosion. A little World War II weapon right Okay, so out. down range we've got some spray paint and a road flare. I'm gonna try to take this 22, just shoot the nipple off, make a little flamethrower. Grayson, thank you for the sub, man. There went the nipple, and I aim a little bit lower. We'll start the show. Does Kyle know I'm doing this? No, and you guys better not snitch. Snitches get stitches, bitch. Hello, my friends. It is FPS Russia again, and I've got one of the most requested videos that we've had for a while. Everyone's always wanting to see World War II weaponry, so I've got three of the best, in my opinion, American weapons from World War II. We've got the M1 Garands here. This was pretty revolutionary for its time. It was a lot more firepower than the average soldier had. In a time of bolt-action rifles, you had eight rounds of semi-automatic power firing a 30-06 round. That was a big step above what the enemy had in most cases. We've also got this M1 carbine. So this is so, sort of between the rifle and the pistol as far as the caliber. It's a 30 caliber bullet, more of a pistol cartridge. There was some plans there actually to replace the 1911, but this is a sidearm. If you can imagine this on a holster, I'm not sure how well that would go, but this was something that you saw paratroopers with, medics, people like that. This was sort of a backup weapon, not really what you were charging into battle with, but it certainly can get the job done. And then we've got the World War II bullet hose. We've got 45 ACP raining out of this thing at a very high rate of fire. This, of course, as everyone I'm sure knows, is the Tommy gun. So, got some interesting targets, some very interesting Tommy weapons. guns are just the coolest looking guns. Okay, Especially so with first the drum things mag. first, we've got our M1 carbine here. We were just talking about this, about how much it weighed. I don't know the exact weight, but 
it's light enough I feel like I could throw it really far. That's the, the cool thing about this. It's that 30 carbine caliber, which is, like I said, somewhere between a pistol caliber and a rifle caliber. Not much recoil, and it's just really light. You can see where they had the idea of maybe replacing a sidearm with this, but I think it's going to chew up this ice nicely. Why are you still watching these? Kitty says, "Cause we're having a we're having a nice nostalgia stream, just nice calm, remembering the good old days." Because otherwise, I'd have to check the news and see that St. Louis is probably burning right now. <laughs> so there you go. You can see not only does it pack a pretty good punch for that round, it's very accurate. We were able to pick off the little bits of ice that were left over really like this gun let's try something else okay so down range we've got one of my favorite targets i'm gonna call this shitter mountain and we got our m1 garand <laughs> i forgot here. about so that when you're loading these clips in here it's a little bit difficult and there's actually an injury named after the gun they call it grand thumb and that's from when people got their thumbs almost bitten off by this thing so it's a little bit precarious you have to be very careful Those toilets don't stand a chance. That'd be a bitch to clean up. No, I bet that was Jeremy's job, so Scott probably didn't care. So you can see there at the end, every time we go through eight rounds, that clip pops up, makes a very uh, distinguishable noise. They used to replicate that noise by taking these, clanging them against their helmets, then the enemy would pop his head up and that would happen to him. Let's move on. Clever. Okay, so we got their Tommy gun and I just wanted to quickly show you guys because it's hard to tell with a machine gun, but we've loaded it up with tracer and an incendiary round so you're going to get the sense of the real firepower. You're going to see every impact. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Very Lord of the Ringsy epic music. Next stream, we're just going to listen to Gregorian chants for hours. So when you've got these rounds like this, you can really see the kind of firepower you're laying down because every impact is so obvious. I wonder if they had these back in World War II. Let's do one more thing. Okay, so one last thing. <laughs> we couldn't leave without using our Tommy gun on some of these Axis-powered three-liter sodas. Thank you so much, Blue. So really appreciate it, it, man.
manscape stream. Good idea. So that was awesome. If you can imagine this much firepower back in World War II, as I've said a few times, a time when many of your enemies had bolt action rifles and you've got the machine gun like this, especially for close quarters when you really run into those evil soda bottles. Really impressed. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I definitely had a lot of fun showing off this old weaponry. And as always, have a nice day. All right.